ChatGPT was recently released on November 30th, 2022 for the small price of free. When it went live, users flocked to the OpenAI website so they could test the AI out for themselves. ChatGPT went viral overnight when users found the AI was able to spit out natural sounding conversations. ChatGPT gained 1 million registered users in just 5 days. In comparison, it took Netflix 3.5 years and Facebook 10 months to reach that number. Not only was it able to respond to follow up questions, it could confess it was wrong and dispute shaky premises. The internet was hooked. They piled onto ChatGPT servers to ask it questions for just about everything. Questions ranged from quantum physics, geography, weight loss, random facts, philosophy and current events, but only events up to 2021 because that was the last year ChatGPT was trained on. Writers were using ChatGPT for plot recommendations and ideas on prose. College kids were using ChatGPT for their homework assignments. Singers used ChatGPT to write lyrics. Oh, write me an ethereal chord progression that could also pass as a pop song. Oh, it explains why it's the- Comedians asked it for jokes. One guy used ChatGPT to critique film scripts. One man made ChatGPT plan his entire Christmas schedule and followed it to the letter. More than a handful used ChatGPT to write code one YouTuber even used it to make a fully fledged game. To restart the game, and you know the drill by now. With that done, I considered ending development right there, but I figured I might as well try to add a bit of audio. ChatGPT even became the first AI to write and direct film, thanks to producers Juan and Kemmer. Safe zone? What do you mean? I heard the government is setting up a safe zone. A place for people to live, but only one per family gets to go, and we have to decide who gets to go. That doesn't give you the right to go before. Justin, it looks like tech mogul Elon Musk has just bought the safe zone, and he's offering access to it for only $8 per month. Not only do you get to live without the threat of AI, but you also get access to exclusive features like Twitter Blue. Don't miss out on this amazing opportunity. A couple of enterprising YouTubers have made videos using ChatGPT's written script. We take a look. In the early 2000s, the global economy was booming thanks to low interest rates and a surge in housing prices. That's how I use ChatGPT to make cash cow YouTube videos. And you can ask ChatGPT for any kind of story and any information, compile it into a script, text to speech it in Veed, add stock footage, music, subtitles, all automatically pretty much. Hit export, burn the subtitles in, make sure that's toggled, export video. And there you have it, a YouTube video made with AI. Our Crazier users are changing the meta by ordering ChatGPT to write prompts for AI art generators like ChatGPT's AI art brother, Dal E2. If you still aren't convinced about what all the hype is about, you can just test out ChatGPT's ability to offer answers to your questions. To access ChatGPT, sign up on OpenAI's website and log in for free. Once there, you can start typing questions and expect answers within seconds. The answers ChatGPT gives are way better than Siri or any other AI out there. ChatGPT was nothing short of revolutionary, but how was it made? The AI was trained with conversational text, so it could respond to basically everything. ChatGPT was created by fine-tuning a model in the GPT 3.5 series of AI using Microsoft Azure's supercomputing infrastructure. It's able to respond to follow-up questions, tell the user if their questions are garbage, or refute false assumptions. A very impressive feat. It's not as powerful as GPT-3 or OpenAI's other artificial intelligence projects, but its ability to add appropriate context-specific responses are more suitable for conversations and chatbot applications online. ChatGPT says it best. When I typed in a question asking it what the difference was between ChatGPT and other AI like GPT-3, ChatGPT responded by claiming it was a more specialized language model for conversation, while GPT-3 is a more general purpose model for a wider range of natural language tasks. 
Surprisingly, Elon Musk actually had a hand in starting the ChatGPT project. In 2015, Elon, Sam Altman, and a couple of rich Silicon Valley investors started the company OpenAI by collectively pledging a total of $1 billion. The OpenAI company was supposed to be a non-profit organization at first, with the goal of promoting friendly AI which would benefit humanity. Elon Musk actually resigned from the OpenAI's board in 2018. He has famously expressed his doomsday predictions for AI, claiming AI would assert the human race like Skynet from Terminator or Hal. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. What's the problem? I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. What are you talking about, Hal? This mission is too important for me to allow you to jeopardize it. So it's ironic that the company he founded managed to create an AI that could spit out answers which are almost indistinguishable from normal human speech. ChatGPT's artificial intelligence has some limitations. A major problem is that ChatGPT can't fact check itself. While ChatGPT as a service is attached to the internet, the ChatGPT AI gained all its intelligence through learning models. It isn't looking up stuff on Google at all. It's actually responding based on the data it was trained on. The data which was gathered from the internet up till the year 2021. People from other corners of the internet were wary of ChatGPT. Because of the AI's capability to generate essays of content with a simple prompt, there's the worry that copywriters and other professions that require essay writing might no longer be necessary. Hiring people to deal with customer service inquiries only seems like a possibility. The technology of ChatGPT won't be adopted by businesses in the same way it won't take jobs from copywriters. ChatGPT is prone to biased answers and not all of its information is correct. Sometimes the AI will generate incorrect fake answers out of nowhere in response to questions. This is a big no-no for businesses that want to avoid lawsuits from customers who are fed incorrect information by their AI. ChatGPT has some safeguards in place to ensure the AI doesn't spit out inappropriate requests. If you try to ask it sexual or violent questions, the AI will simply give you a sorry we can't answer those explicit questions response and refuse to answer. There are ways around this though. Currently, ChatGPT is causing problems for the education sector. An alarming amount of students are using ChatGPT's AI to do their assignments for them. University professors are appalled by the technology and are frustrated with the growing number of essays which seem so human-like. It has become hard to distinguish between human and AI when it comes to written content. Perhaps the time when AI is incorporated in everyday society is upon us. I honestly didn't expect that day to come so quickly. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe.